It's market day in Sabana Real and villagers are coming together. The little mountain village lies in the west of the Dominican Republic, right on the border with neighboring Haiti. See that mountain over there, where it looks so pale? The ground is totally dried up. That's part of Haiti. Haiti is one of the world's poorest countries. By contrast, the Dominican Republic's economy has been booming for years. Yet little of that prosperity makes its way to the border region in the west of the country. I'm a community leader, responsible for the development and progress in our village. That's what we're fighting for, because many people are leaving due to the lack of help and work. One of the most pressing problems here is that villagers have no electricity. I've been doing laundry for three days. It rained, which is why it's taken so long. Washing clothes by hand is pretty tiring. My back hurts. If I had a washing machine, things would be much easier. But I have neither light nor a washing machine. Josefina Sena is also worried about her children's education. Their school is closed due to the coronavirus pandemic, so they need to learn from home, online. But how is that supposed to work without a computer or the power to run it? In the next months, all going well, major changes are in store for Sabana Real. Clemens Findeisen from the German development agency GIZ is working on the Dominican Republic's energy transition. Now he's bringing renewable energy here. The government asked us to support them with a small, centralized photovoltaic facility to supply power to the village. The villagers have had some experience with solar energy. They pooled their money to install solar-powered streetlights. Building roofs were also equipped with mini solar panels years ago, though most were stolen, sold or no longer work. But that should change in the future, thanks to improved technology. A centralized solar power plant will deliver electricity right to people's homes. Sabana Real will have its own power grid. A solar plant just like it has already been built in another village a few hours' drive away in the south of the country. Thanks to the sun, 50 families here will soon have electricity and internet access. Each family will pay a monthly fee. This money will ensure the system's sustainability. If something needs repairing or replacing, they'll have enough resources to restore the entire system over time. Renewable energies are gaining ground throughout the country, but it's just the start of a long journey. 85% of the Dominican Republic's energy still comes from fossil fuels. For example, the coal-fired Punta Catalina power station produces one-third of the country's energy alone. But the Dominican Republic is trying to switch to cleaner forms of energy, and it seems to be on the right path. The biggest solar farms in the Caribbean are located here, including the Monte Cristi Solar Park, which covers an area of over 200 hectares. It's one of 15 such projects. By the year 2025, a quarter of the country's energy is expected to come from renewable sources. Like its nine wind farms, including Matafongo with its 17 turbines. The wind is a powerful force in the Caribbean, especially during hurricane season. Yesterday we had a wind speed of 11 meters per second and our facility was going at full tilt. If there's a hurricane, the turbines will switch off once the wind speed hits 25 meters per second. It's a self-defense mechanism. But wind is hard to control. 
That's why the laws of the land refer to renewable energies as energías non gestionables, energy sources that are unmanageable and therefore unreliable. That got stuck in people's heads a bit. So, especially at the start of this project, there was clear resistance to this variable renewable energy because of the fear of its impact on the quality of the power network. In the capital, Santo Domingo, there's now a central control center which helps provide a better overview of the energy supply. How much energy is currently being produced by the big coal and oil power plants? How much by carbon neutral facilities? The biggest challenge is to calculate the power being generated at the big solar parks. One minute a solar power plant can be producing a lot of energy. But then a cloud comes and suddenly there's less. And there's nothing the operator can do to control it. The more data they receive, the smaller the difference between prediction and reality. Little by little, trust in wind and solar power is growing. In Sabana Real, people are already sold on the new solar power plant. The village elders have already picked out a place for it. Because if folks have electricity, they won't want to flee their village, says Nelson Rosado. No one wants to leave their community. There's no better place than here. It's quiet and free of air pollution. All we need is a better quality of life. As many as 300,000 people in the Dominican Republic still live without power, though soon 50 more families will be enjoying the benefits of electricity.